Welcome back, guys. Came home and found a chick on the floor. Hope she hatched all of them. Here are my silver bullet hands. They are hatching eggs all the time. This girl over here laying eggs too. Yeah, these girls are very productive. All my hands are now because it's something that I kind of select for. Now what I'm going to do is take this baby off of her. I don't want to have any babies here because they'll fall. The cats will catch them. So I got to get them all out and put them on my brooder. This is what I do. I just let them hatch. Hatch them out and then I put them over here with some other babies that I have. Looking nice. I'll show you the mom. I'll show you the dad too. Whew, it's the hot one. This is the last one I have with my little radios. There you go. They'll be able to reach. This is just for them to be able to eat their feed. I have a little radio stag. I had an issue with some cats, my own cats, and it's my mistake. I added this boards here because I would find the cats up here with a chick in their claws. They wouldn't pull them out, they'll just kill them. So I'll be finding dead chicks inside. It's my mistake, my fault. I should have thought about that. So now I put this boards here and I don't have any issues with the cats. And you learn as you go, you know what I'm saying? You learn as you go, you're understanding what you gotta do in order for you to perfect or better your what you already have. Work on what you have pretty much, you know, try to make yourself better. Try to make your your uh, your pens, your brooders, try to make your programs better. You know, we live and we learn. I had a lot of radio chicks up here, but they are gone. Purple zip tie, which is one of my favorite ones. Real, real good productive. Real, real good. Uh, they pull through. Now I only have this one stag. How do I know that's a stag? I don't know. It's just, they look different. They look bigger. They look more manly. I mean, more manly, more masculine. I don't know if you know what I'm saying. Uh, the way he stands. I guarantee you that's going to be a stag. Anyways, let's get the rest of the chicks. Here we go. We got one, four, five, six, seven. It's eight in total, but one of them, I found them on, like I said, I found them on the ground, and I think something tried to get him, so he has a, a broken wing. Um, perfect little bird, so you can tell already. Very, very similar, similar color. You see that little yellow on the back too? All of them have it. See that? Except this guy, he just has it a little bit, but pretty much similar. This is what it means to be pure. Uh, talking about pure, you know, people will tell you there's no such thing as pure. I don't know when the word pure came to be a bird that magically popped out of the blue or a strain of birds that popped out of the blue with no ancestry, no past ancestry, and it was a true pure bloodline. You know, because they'll even say that white hack or that every bird, that nothing is pure. There's no such thing as pure. And there is. I don't know when the word, when people started believing that the word was that. You know, the word pure, you know, means coming from, from breeders. Pure means that the bird, you know, oh no, we're going to have some issues here. Pure means, you know, coming from the breeder, from, from a British perspective, is a, a bloodline that's able to produce birds that are very similar uh, very similar characteristics, uh, very similar abilities, very similar uh, phenoty phenotypic phenotypically similar birds. This guy here, I think he's gonna be able to bite on their toes, but we'll see. It looks like it's gonna be an issue. We'll see. He's a lot older. 
But yeah, let's go. You know what? I'm gonna get that other one. I'm gonna put him in here too. I don't want him to just die. He'll be able, he'll make it. He can walk. By the way, this is dad here. He's black, that tie. But that's him. Ooh, it is hot. I have stag died today. I'll show you him. I know, girly. I can't let them have the chicks because they'll they won't make it. This is how you close this kennels here, this pants here. They won't make it. Let me put this guy up here. He's got a broken wing. Hopefully he he'll make it. I'm sure he will. That's Sam here. So eight in total. At least that's what I'm hoping. So hoping for because that's what I found. I'm pretty sure I might find a couple more. Let me show you the dead stag we had today. It's freaking hot. Too hot. I don't know if he's going to make it. I might just put him out of his misery. But anyways, with this Texas... This Texas weather will really select some strong birds for you though. Only the strongest survive. And you get some of the strongest birds here. No medicine, no medication whatsoever, guys. No coccidia medicine, none of that. I know some guys do that. Uh, core it, core it. I've been thinking about using it, but we're, we're going strong still like this. No antibiotics, no medicines only thing i do is deworm this guys here about twice a year that's about it deworm them twice a year and i'll tell you you'll produce some strong sturdy birds and after a while you'll start passing those that adaptability to to the rest of your flock it's a good thing to do that you know and you'll get some, some pretty strong animals Let's see what else we're going to talk about. Egg production. Next video is going to be about egg production. I'm going to go more in depth about it. In order for you guys to get an idea of what I do. It takes a lot. It takes a lot. I count the eggs. I count how many eggs each bird lays. How many eggs came out of a pen. Or how many. Uh, you know. I keep notes of, note of all that. So. I'm going to go ahead and give this guy some water. You guys have a nice day. Stay, stay cool out there. You know. It's so hot. This was 110 today. I about, about died twice today. I came back to life with some Powerade and some coconut water. Stay hydrated, guys. Stay fresh, you guys. Keep up the, you know, keep up the good fight. <laughs> yeah, have a nice day. Thanks for watching.